Hello, and welcome to the first lecture in our course. This week, we're going to take a bird's eye view of industrial organizational psychology. In the first part, we're going to define IO psychology. We're also going to take a look at what personnel psychologists do, what organizational psychologists do, and what engineering psychologists do. We're also going to take a look at where IO psychologists tend to work. Let's begin with what is IO psychology. It is a subfield of the broader field of psychology. It has probably the most complicated name of all the subfields, and that's because of its history. Years ago, in the early 1900s, the subfield began as industrial psychology. Then in the 1920s and 1930s, things began to change and the O side of IO psychology was born. Today, we combine the I and the O into one subfield because the two areas are highly related and the work of professionals in industrial psychology and in organizational psychology, that work overlaps quite a bit. Officially, IO psychology involves both the study of and the application of psychological principles, theories, and research to the workplace, to real life problems that organizations and employees face every day at work. Since the beginning of IO psychology, the goal has been to be relevant to what large numbers of people are facing, to what organizations in the modern times are facing. Another goal has been to be useful, to help people improve their own lives and to help organizations improve their performance and at the end of the day, increase profits. It isn't enough for IO psychologists to scientifically study different topics like leadership, motivation, communication. That isn't enough. From the beginning, IO psychologists have tried to develop theories, models, techniques, strategies that everyday people can apply to their own lives. And finally, just like the founders of IO psychology, the field is grounded in the scientific method. Everything that we will learn about this semester in this course is grounded in scientific theory, in scientific research, in scientific evidence. In some cases, what the public believes is backed up by scientific research. In other cases, quote unquote, common knowledge is not backed up by science. For example, many people in the public are familiar with the Myers-Briggs type indicator, the MBTI. It is a commonly used personality test in the workplace, but what many people don't realize is that test is about as reliable and valid as one of the personality tests that you can find in a Cosmopolitan magazine or in Men's Health magazine. There are much better options, options that give you data you can defend in court, and options that are much cheaper, in some cases free. Like other subfields of psychology, IO psychology involves both science and application. Therefore, any one IO psychologist acts as both a scientist and as a practitioner in the work they do, whether they are a consultant or a professor or work in some management position. They are trained to rely on science, on evidence, and to apply psychology to specific situations based on the details of that situation. Some IO psychologists work mostly as a scientist. 
many of your professors, for example. Their full-time position at SIUE is to teach and conduct research, and really the research is the most important part. Other IO psychologists work for corporations, they work for research institutions, they work for think tanks, and still others are managers, leaders in organizations. These individuals spend most of their time applying, practicing, doing psychology as opposed to researching it. But again, any IO psychologist is trained to do both, to be skilled in both areas. So regardless of what they do for a living, they bring those values to their work. Any one IO psychologist will have various goals, but I want to cover three of the most common goals that professionals in the field have when they are conducting research or when they are working with organizations. The first goal is to ensure that employees and other stakeholders are being treated fairly. This can involve making sure a company complies with employment laws, developing, administering, and validating selection tests and performance measures to make sure that they are fair and that they are not causing any type of adverse impact. It can also involve helping people and organizations leverage these differences in a way that can help them be more creative and make better decisions and address issues with justice perceptions, specifically issues with discrimination and harassment. Their second goal is to address job satisfaction, to try to make jobs more satisfying for employees. This might involve designing jobs so that they are safer, more rewarding, or more efficient. This can also involve managing people's expectations about performance and making sure that the rewards they receive are valuable, are something that they want and can use. It can involve building teams and making sure that they are prepared for the work that they're going to do and measuring job attitudes so that appropriate interventions can be implemented. The third goal that I want to mention here is to improve performance to improve productivity. Again, this can involve redesigning jobs to make them work better for employees. It can also involve the development of training and development opportunities, as well as the integration of new technology to improve effectiveness and efficiency while also managing any resistance to these changes. And finally, IO psychologists are sometimes involved in organization development, in analyzing the structure of an organization, its span of control, its culture, and then design interventions that can address any issues that were identified. Here we have three different types of roles that an IO psychologist might play. Some people are focused more on personnel psychology, on the I side. Others are more focused on the O side. We have yet a third category that isn't represented in the name IO psychology, but is nonetheless extremely important to occupational health, engineering psychology, or sometimes called human factors or ergonomics. Personnel psychologists tend to be more focused on the technical aspects of the field, topics like recruitment, selection, training, performance appraisal. Organizational psychologists tend to focus more on the abstract concepts like emotion and motivation, as well as group dynamics and teamwork. Engineering psychologists are unique. Their job really involves a whole host of industries. 
engineering, and psychology, obviously, but technology and biology as well. Engineering psychologists study the physical, physiological, and cognitive aspects of work so that the work environment can be better designed to increase efficiency, effectiveness, performance, productivity, and so on. Let's take a closer look at each one of these to give you a better idea of some of the career opportunities that are available in IO psychology. Personnel psychologists are skilled at analyzing jobs and identifying the job tasks that are important to job success and identifying the KSAOs that employees need in order to do the job. They are trained to develop psychological tests and to validate those tests to make sure that they could stand up in a court of law, to make sure that they are doing what they are intended to do, which is accurately measure performance. Personnel psychologists sometimes specialize in training and development, in developing training programs that really teach people new knowledge, new skills that they can then use to do their jobs better. Organizational psychologists tend to study behavior, emotions, attitudes, the individual person in organizational settings. They might be asked to examine different aspects of an organization, like its culture, its reward system, the technology it uses to train employees. These structures they might also be asked to measure job attitudes, specific components of organizational behavior like motivation and interpersonal relationships, decision-making, leadership, as well as group dynamics. During both world wars, early engineering psychologists helped design military equipment, including cockpits. They helped design the presentation of the instruments, making the most frequently used instruments more accessible closer to the pilot. Interestingly, IO psychologists rarely work as IO psychologists. The table on the left lists some of the most common job titles held by IO psychologists by people trained in IO psychology. The graphic on the right shows the percentage of IO psychologists from the early 2000s that work in different industries. You can see that about a third of them work in the academic environment, a third of them work in private organizations, a third of them work for consulting firms, and a small percentage of them work with public organizations.